Hey, what's up, BTY Nation? What's up, UMC family? What's up, family and friends? A uh, happy Wednesday, hump day Wednesday. It is uh, about 9.30, late, late, uh, late night. Check in with you guys. Uh, the bad news is I have nowhere to go after this. So uh, no, no practice to rush to for my kids. No um, game to rush to. So I am I'm gonna try to keep this short, uh, but the odds, what's up, what's up, Big Chris? The odds of it being super short are slim to none because I have nowhere to be. Got my got my tea, my keto tea, UMC. I'm in my pajamas, literally, right? Got my emoji pajamas. Uh, so it might be it might be a long one, Chris. So hope you hope you laying down. Uh, but I'm gonna go over. Uh, the two, the, he won't happen. Uh, uh, two of the more commonly asked questions that I get. Uh, what's up, Big Ray? I get a lot of questions, guys, right? You know, I've been doing fitness for a long time. Uh, even before I began doing fitness as a, as a uh, job, as a business. Um, you want to take over, Chris? Yeah, I take over. Um, even before that, people ask me questions about about a lot of things, how to get bigger arms, how to, you know, how to train to get faster, how to, how to, uh, you know, strengthen my legs, my, you know, my, my chest, whatever. Uh, but by far the two most commonly asked questions that I get um, in my business, amongst my friends, amongst parents that I talk to at my kids' events is number one, and they're related. What's up, Nevin? Mission brother. What's up, Anthony? Uh, so the two questions I get most commonly are related, right? Number one, everybody wants a six pack, right? Hey, Dina, everybody wants a flat stomach, right? And, and, and it's proof because all of the marketing that the companies do are geared toward that. You know, all the lies they come up with are geared toward, um, you know, your vulnerabilities to wanting to have a flat stomach. So, more often than not, people ask me, you know, what do I do to get my stomach to go away? What, how do I get rid of this? Um, and the answer they think is always some sort of an abdominal movement, right? Either crunches or what's up, Louis? Luis, uh, crunches, you know, some kind of planks, some kind of ab work. And so, um, when they ask me that, even in my classes, you know, well. I'll say, what do you want to work on? So I pride myself on trying to be able to create workouts on the fly. You know, our workouts at, at Ultimate Muscle Confusion are always different. Um, and oftentimes I'll create it on the fly. So, um, and many, many times I'll have different workouts for all my classes. So the 6 a.m. class is different than the 7 a.m. class. The 7 a.m. class is different than the 8 a.m. class. The 8 a.m. class is different than the 9 a.m. class. So they're all different. They're all kind of structured the same way, full body, 50 minutes, using a timer. But I, I can create uh, workouts based on who's in the class, you know, any injuries we have, what they want to focus on. So often when I ask them what they want to work on, they say abs. And so people who know me by now know the next question. Hey, Jamie, the next question is, is you want to do abs or you want to do some bullshit abs? You want to get your your stomach to really work and and make it show and look good, or do you want to pretend that you want it to look good and do some 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 bullshit, right? So um, so I always ask them that because the answer to the question is the answer to the question of how do I get my abs to show is you got to get rid of the fat around the stomach, right? And oftentimes what happens is is if you build the abdominal muscles under the fat layers, oftentimes you will get a bigger stomach temporarily, right? Because your body's made up of, of three layers, right? You got bone, which we don't change, hopefully. Hopefully, you know, oftentimes we, our bones get weaker and smaller as we age. Uh, but we have bones, then we have muscle, then we have fat and skin, right? Hey, Richard. Hey, Hashim. Right? Hey, Timmy. Oh, what's up, Timmy? Old school. That's old school, guys. That's from the 80s. All right, so we got we got bone, we got muscle, we got fat, 
right? So if any of those layers increase in size, right, while the other two don't change, that whole area gets bigger, right? So many times if you work on just abdominal work, right, building the muscle and haven't done anything to change or reduce the fat layer, that region will appear bigger temporarily. So if you think doing crunches or doing planks or doing these things are going to make your abs look better, you're wrong, right? They'll make it stronger, which is also important, right? Having a strong core is vital to longevity, is vital to injury prevention, is vital to making sure the other things you do as you get stronger, deadlift, squats, you know, bench press, all those things you do, having a strong core enables you to, to not only go heavier in those other lifts, but also to be safer, right? So it's important to have a strong core, but doing ab work will not make your abs show, right? Getting rid of the fat layer will make it show, right? Once it does show, having, having chiseled or developed abdominal muscles will make them look good, right? Like mine do. I won't show them right now because Chris is getting mad at me, right? They'll make them look good, but doing the ab work itself will not make your abs show, right? How do I do that, coach, is the next question. You have to begin to create strategies, create behaviors, create habits that regularly make your body burn the fat layer, right? Burn the fat layer, all right? So that's important. So the important thing is to begin to burn body fat, right? Reduce weight, right, which is a proxy right, to burning body fat. The weight itself is not always the answer, but burning body fat is. So question one people ask me is how do I get my stomach flat? How do I get my abs to show? How do I get a six pack so when I go to the beach or the pool, I look great? I always tell them, build your muscles so you're strong enough to do other lifts. And then when they do show, they'll look good, right? But before that, we have to burn body fat. Right. So the question is, the real question that we have to really talk about and be honest about is how do we burn body fat? Right. What's the best method to burn calories? I don't really believe in calories because it's a it's a it's a it's a in 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 exact science, number one. And it doesn't really tell the true story. So we're trying to burn fuel. Right. And I'll go over some basics about fuel, how, how our body uses it how our body stores it, and that should help you understand. But at the end of the day, we're trying to make our body use up available fuel to make, to force it to tap into reserve fuel, stored fuel, which is fat, all right? So again, so a, a, a basic, again, a, I'll go over this stuff over and over again, guys, with you guys. But basically, again, I'll give you a high-level tutorial again, right? So our bodies consume and then use fuel. That's how animals are thrive. That's how animals live. Human beings are no different. So we consume fuel in a number of different categories, right? Fat, protein, and carbohydrates, right? The primary fuel that we use to do things, right? To work, to think, to make our body function, to work out, right? The primary fuel we use is glucose slash glycogen carbohydrates, right? So we consume bread, pasta, rice, cereal, all those things. Our body then converts that into glucose, right? Which our body will use immediately if it needs to use it immediately. If it does not, which is often the case, it will store that glycogen, that glucose as glycogen, excuse me, in our muscle and livers, all right? So in order for our body to lose weight, right, to begin to lose fat, we have to, 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 to make that equation negative. We have to consume and use up more of the available glycogen and glucose than, our, than we give our body, right? So if we give our body 10 units of glucose and we use 10 units of glucose, our body's never forced A to, to tap into reserve glycogen, right? Reserve glucose, right? And it will never, ever get to fat stores, right? So we have to create this negative equation, this deficit, this glycogen deficit, this G-tank 
glycolic deficit. Right? The G tank is the is the aggregate of glucose in our bloodstream that we just ate, right? Combined with stored glucose as glycogen, right, in our liver and muscles. So that G tank, I call it, right? We have to create a G tank deficit where we force our body to use up more energy, right, immediate and, and short-term stored energy than we give it, forcing it to, 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 to tap into and use up all of the available glucose and glycogen, right? And when, when we do that, right, most people think of it as just going no carb and no sugar. But the equation works with, with energy input and energy usage, right? So you can ex expedite that process when you go no sugar, when you go low carbs, by exercising, by doing things that require your body to use glycogen, right? Once you've done that, once you've had your, once you've made your body use up all this glucose and and stored glucose as glycogen, now your body's forced to use up or to or to convert body fat into energy, right? That's how our bodies evolved over thousands of years to store energy, right, into fat cells, and when needed and required to release that energy. And convert it back into glycogen to use. I see, actually not glycogen, sorry. Back in there, what's called ketones, but nonetheless, it's energy to convert that energy, that fat energy, into usable energy, right? But we first have to make our body use up the glycogen. All right. So, so how do you do that? What's the best way to to burn fat, right? And that's, that's a misnomer because you don't burn fat. You burn and use up glycogen. You make your body convert body fat at that point, right? Which it then uses as energy, right? You burn up, you use up the glycogen energy, right? Forcing your body to tap into fat stores, convert the fat into usable energy known as ketones. And your body uses the ketones for energy, right? So it's very, very simple, guys. We make it complicated. We don't want to know the truth. We have to use up our body's glucose and glycogen stores, period, right? So how do you do that? Anything that requires your body to use energy does that, right? Working, thinking, those things require energy. Not a lot, but some. Maintaining your body, right? Making your, making your heart pump, making your muscles maintain, maintaining all of your, your, your body temperature, all that requires fuel for your body. Not a whole lot, but some. And then obviously working out, right? Running, lifting, all those things require fuel, require the use of glycogen or glucose, all right? So the reason I, I suggest people lift weights, right? And move heavy things is, is, is two or threefold. It's at least twofold. Number one, we have to lift weights anyway, right? We have to do uh, weight bearing exercises for our bones, number one, right? But also to build lean muscle, right? Our biggest asset in this race against fat is lean muscle, right? People try to avoid it. People try to do cardio. You can't avoid it because and this is this is one of my you know um, charts. Good night, buddy. Um, say bye to everybody. My son's going to bed. He's gonna say good night to everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, buddy. Love you, Bye, buddy. Love you. All right. So, so hey, Amy. Um, so we need we need lean muscle, right? So I created this order of operations, basically, like in school. So, the, in order of of the the methods of losing of of burning energy, in order of most most fuel used per second, right, or most energy used per unit of time, right. I'm gonna go go most to least. All right. So most energy used per unit of time is deliberate exercise, right. Running, lifting, whatever, right. CrossFit, boot camp whatever you do for exercise, deliberate exercise. That, that requires the most energy per, per unit of time, obviously, right? Secondly, right, secondly is the, 
they require recovery, right? It's called, it's called you know, the, the afterburn effect. So the required recovery from deliberate exercise is right below deliberate exercise in terms of, of energy used per second, right? Right below that is any part of your daily activities that is above and beyond what most people would do. Right? Do you park far away from work? Do you take the stairs? Do you do chores at home? Do you do yard work at home? All those things that are above and beyond what a normal person would do, that adds to your daily output or energy usage. Those, those things require more energy per second than an average person in, in off time. Right? And then lastly is sitting like we're doing. Right? At, in your car, at your desk, laying down, watching television, right? being sedentary. Right, that requires the least amount of energy used per unit of time. Obviously, okay. So we got deliberate exercise, recovery from deliberate exercise, active lifestyle, right, and then fourth is sedentary, right, doing nothing, right. The problem is, is that when you look at a pie chart of the amount of time you spend in those activities, it's flipped, right. We spend the most time. In 24 hours, sedentary, right? We spend the second second most time doing stuff around the house, walking to the, to the car, right? Third most time, um, recovery from working out. Fourth most time, working out, right? So because of that, the biggest part of the pie is spent doing nothing. So we need for that, that part of the pie to be as high as possible. It won't be super high compared to exercise, but we need the help of that part of the pie to help us burn through fuel, right? That's where lean muscle comes in, right? The leaner you are, the more muscle you have, the higher that number is, the higher the number is that your body spends most time in. So, so building muscle is important, right? For your bones, for longevity, for all those things, but it's important for metabolism, right? So when I say I want you guys to lift weights, I say that because you need to lift weights in order for you to have a long-term strategy and for you to be a viable human being on this earth for a long time, right? Cardio has its purpose, but when you have to choose between the two, which many of us do, right? I want you guys to choose an activity that's going to do more bang for the buck, right? So those who know me know I don't do really any steady state cardio, right? I don't run. I don't get on the bike. I don't, I don't do the Stairmaster, any of that. Right. What I do is I do things that that require me to move many, many body parts that require me to move a lot of weight and do it in a fast enough pace when my heart rate gets up. Right. Because I'm trying to make my body use as much fuel, number one, in the moment as possible. Right. So if I have an hour to work out, I want my body to use as much fuel, breaking down muscle tissue, moving weights. My, my, my heart rate is up. My body's trying to trying to calibrate my, my body temperature, all those things. Plus, my body has to recover for much longer after that than it would had I just done a, a jog or got on a treadmill or a stationary bike. Right. So now we look at the whole window of the workout and the and the and the recovery period. Right, one hour plus two more, say three hours, that three hour period, my body is forced to do much more energy usage than someone who just did cardio. Right? So I'm not against cardio. I'm not against running. I'm not against stairmaster or doing, you know, whatever you guys do, right? I'm time efficient. Right? So so if you have a lot of time to do both, to do weights, which you must do. Right? I've already gone over the reasons why. What's up, Greg? I've already what's up, Bill? What's up, Jamie? I've already gone over the reasons why you have to lift weights. Right? You have to lift weights. You have to build strong bones. You have to build muscle, right? For longevity, right? You have to build muscle for metabolism. So if we have to build muscle, right, and you choose to do your cardiovascular stuff separately, now you have to do both. Right? And unless you are in your 20s living at home, or you're a bodybuilder getting ready for a show and have plenty of time, or are retired, you don't have enough time in the week to do both separately, right? You don't have time to do three days of three days of weight training and two days of cardio. I know you don't because you're busy, right? So because you don't, right, we're trying to combine those, 
right? If you go to my YouTube page, we're trying to combine the workouts into one, right? Let's move some weights around and then do some burpees, right? Let's have a timer so we're going back and forth at a, at a fast enough pace where our heart rate gets up, right? So, so when people say, what's the best way to burn calories? I don't believe in calories because it's a number that's not even real, right? Especially if it's on your, on your watch, right? I believe in burning fuel, right? And you know when you're burning fuel because you're breathing heavy, right? You feel uncomfortable. Your muscles hurt, right? I don't need a watch to tell me that. I don't wear a fucking Apple watch. You guys know that. I don't, I don't, I don't count my calories. I don't track my calories on a, on a phone. Uh, my weight, I track my weight. I track that, but I don't track the body fat that, that the damn scale says, right? So I'm tracking things that I know I can monitor, that I know are intuitive, that I know make sense to me. If I'm going as hard as I can, number one, that's good enough. Number two, if I can't go anymore, what who cares what the what the what the watch says? Right? If I'm going as hard as I can, the number's irrelevant. Because if it's too low, who cares? I can't go any harder. Right? So the idea is you just push yourself as hard as you can. Right? Do it in a way where you're building muscle, right? Getting your heart rate up and making your body use fuel. Lots of fuel. Right. And if you think about if you think about a car, I love analogies. Right. If you are a car. Right. Is it is it more? Do you burn more fuel? Right. Going on Highway five and coasting at 70. Right. That that's the analogy of cardiovascular where you go, you're jogging, you're talking on your phone, you're with a buddy, you're walking, you're going for a hike for two hours. Right. And you're talking. Right? Are you burning more fuel on in that scenario, or are you burning more fuel in city traffic in San Francisco, where you're going from stoplight to stoplight, stop and go, and you're one of these young kids with a new car, speeding up, stopping, speeding up, stopping? Which 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 scenario burns more fuel? Obviously, the latter, right? So your body's no different, right? By making your body produce a lot of fuel quickly, you're making it burn through more fuel quickly, right? And so that allows you to get rid of fuel, get rid of glycogen much more quickly, right? And if, you, and if you're smart about doing things, the way I try to teach people is you begin to create strategies where you permanently eat less glycogen, right? I don't believe in going zero carbs. I don't believe in going strong, you know, you know severe keto diet, not because I don't believe they work. I just believe they're not doable for most people, right? And unfortunately, as I said in my last video, most people are not even going into it, anticipating to doing it permanently. How do I know? Because everybody does it for, uh, I'm on a 30-day zero sugar. Why 30 days? What's that going to fucking do? Right? Even if you lose 10 pounds, if it's not a permanent habit, is it gonna is it going to stay? No. You're better off figuring out if, if sugar's bad for you, which if you're doing no, th no sugar for 30 days, you must think it's bad for you. If it's bad enough for you, find a way to permanently reduce how much sugar you eat, right? If not working out, you've deemed being unhealthy, and now you want to do a 30-day fucking challenge, you know, burpee challenge, whatever. Rather than do that, if you think working out is important, figure out a way to do it permanently, as part of your life permanently. Nobody wants to hear that. Right? How long do I need I need to, I need to go lower carbs? Is it is 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 carbs bad? If it's not bad, you never have to do it lower. If you think it's bad for you, which we know it is, then figure out a way to do it permanently. Right? How long do I need to work out for? Do you think working out is healthy? <laughs> is it good for you? Right? So you should probably think about doing it forever. Right? Nobody wants to wants to hear that. You have to do it forever. The same way your great great grandmother had to work out forever, there was no there was no cavalry coming to save her ass, right? To bring her food, right? To walk her baby down to the down to the stream to wash her, right? To carry her baby to the next village, there was nobody coming to save you to do that shit for you, right? So our so our great 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 parents grandparents had to do all that shit until they went to the grave, right? Why are you special, right? Why are you special? Right, so I don't think about working out until I'm 50 in four years, two or three and a half years. I don't think about eating less carbs 
until I'm whatever, right? I've, de I've, I've deemed that it's necessary and healthy to do these things, right? To do these things, right? And so I'm going to do it forever, right? And so because of that, I didn't start off by saying I'm going to do no sugar, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Well, the working out part, I've been, I've actually gotten better, but I used to do more, more crazy stuff. But had I started out from doing nothing, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said I'm gonna work out every day, right? What I did, and what I suggest you guys do, is, is commit to it, as I said in the last video, and figure out a way to do it regularly, right? Build the habit of doing it regularly. Right. And going back to what I said is that if you create that strategy, now you're at a point. Right. Like I am where your average levels of glycogen in your body are always low. Right. Imagine a tank and it's like 10 gallons. Right. Right now, most of you live at about nine and a half gallons of glycogen in your body. Not, not literally, but I'm saying I'm using a round number. Right. So your G tank, because you, you, you consume carbs breakfast, morning, sorry, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? And then most of you don't move enough, right, to to reduce that, to use up that glycogen. And then your composition, your body composition, your lean muscle mass isn't high enough. So you're, you're in between, your sedentary part of your day doesn't burn through hardly any of that, right? So now you live at about nine and a half, right? And then when you go on these little tangents where you want to burn through some some you want to go no sugar or low carb or, or exercise or follow some DVD or go to Orange Theory and get some some free week or whatever it is, and then you might burn through more of that glycogen than normal and lose some weight because it's all water and stored glycogen, right? But then you're back to where you were, right? So because most of you do that, what I did was create a strategy where now I you know my eating window is smaller. So I'm consuming less carbs. I'll never go zero carbs. And anybody who knows me knows I, I eat whatever I want, just not all, this, all the time, right? But because my window is so small now, like my eating window is literally 3 p.m. to about 10 p.m. every day, right? I use ketones. I use BCAs. I use, I use Bulletproof Coffee. I use my, my ketone, my keto tea. But I don't consume a lot of carbs, right? And so... Because of that, my average levels are lower, right? And because I've been training, excuse me, for 30 years or so, right? I'm in good enough shape now. So now in one or two workouts, I can go through all that glycogen, right? So part of what we're trying to do when you, when you build this fitness level is you're trying to do two things at the same time. You're trying to create habits that lower your average G tank levels. Hey, Ron. Right. So. So, again, if you don't want to, if you, I got to have my beer, Bobby, I got to have my I got to have my pasta whatever. Fine. I'm just telling you, you can't live the way you live and think you're going to be different. Right. I'm not saying no pasta. I'm not saying no beer. I'm not saying no wine. What I'm saying is, is be smart about it. Right. And understand that you got to stop being selfish and thinking about you all the fucking time. Right. All about what you want all the time and never about what your body wants and needs. And has needed forever, right? So, so yes, you want to have 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 you know beer with your buddies. I get that, right? Every Friday night, whatever it is. That means Thursday you can't have have lunch with your fucking other buddies, or you can't get up and have bagels and donuts on Friday morning when you're going to have have beer with your buddies. Simple as that. Right? You can't say I want to change, but I want, I don't want to change anything. Right? I want to change, Bobby, but I don't want to change anything. Makes no sense, right? So I still enjoy my shit. I, you know, I went and got sabotaged and ambushed by by Girl Scouts this weekend, right? I love the shortbread cookies. I can knock out a whole sleeve watching a basketball game, right? I think it's like fourteen cookies, right? But I can do that. Number one, I don't consume carbs the whole day or the whole week. Again, my window is three p.m. until about ten p.m. every day. It's when I eat. Right. And if and if my G tank is is high, that's going to be all protein. If my G tank is OK, it might be some carbs. Right. But I've managed to create that habit over time. Right. Again, this is going back to my college days when I would set my alarm and get up and eat potatoes and ice cream trying to gain weight. So the habits that I had 
were as bad as anybody's to overcome. But I realized again, I realized that carbs were not gonna were gonna make me overweight. Right? Carbs were gonna were gonna give me issues later on. That carbs are the link to cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, right? Obesity, diabetes, right? All of which are 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 high risk factors in the black community and my family directly. So I realized that and I said, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna be stupid and go and go all keto or 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 no carbs. That's impossible. I got two kids at home. Right? My son is, is, is super skinny. I'm not gonna make him go no carbs. Right? My daughter and wife, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna make them not enjoy what they enjoy. So instead I say, you know, I'm gonna be smart about it and consume less. Right? Not less at each meal, not 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 prepping and, and making all these damn meals Sunday night, but reducing my window. That's how I did it. There's more than way, more than one way to do it. That's how I did it. But because of that, my average levels for my G tank are low enough. Right, low enough to where if I ever do go out for a weekend and have fun, now I'm up here. I'm not. I'm not at risk of storing body fat. Right, but more importantly, I'm low enough to where I can do one or two workouts and empty my G tank out. Right, and when it's empty, what happens? My body burns body fat, oxidizes, right, converts body fat into usable energy. Right. So as we as we progress, we're trying to do those two things in conjunction, lower our average glycogen levels permanently. Guys, have make habits. Right. Don't do. I don't understand this 30 day thing. I really don't. If somebody can explain to me what these 30 day challenges are about, please email me. Because in 30 days, you won't be where you want to be. You're not a bodybuilder who's been doing the hard part for nine months. Now he can go or he or she can go no sugar. Because she done done work for nine months. And now she can do 30 days of no carbs to get ready for the stage. What the hell have you done for nine months? I mean, be honest. What have, what have you done for nine years to do a fucking 30-day challenge? Well, I'm getting pumped up now. Ooh. Really, though? Am I right? You ain't done shit for, for, for 10 years, and now you're doing a 30-day challenge. Right? So, some, some extreme thing that, that you have never done. I get it. I get it. Having a target, having a group of people do it is fun. I get it. Right, but when you're done with that, and I've seen it over and over again, guys, as 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 a fitness business now and before that, I've seen it happen. After that, what do you do? You go back to what you were doing, probably. Right, whether you won the challenge or lost it, you go back to what you were doing, because it's too hard, right? There and 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 you didn't win anything, really. Right, so so it was too hard going, you know, eating broccoli and chicken breast. It was too hard going every day to the gym. Just it was too hard to get all these damn steps in on your Fitbit, right? So you won this challenge, but it was too hard. Now it's over, and you go back to what you're doing. I see it over and over again, guys. I see it over and over again, right? So rather than do that bullshit, figure out what you can do permanently, right? And 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 say, you know, I gotta change, right? Because you know, I, I had a good friend of mine whose wife had a cardio episode, cardiac episode. Right, she's good, right? I had another friend um, who who had to go to the doctor, right? And so, if you think you got time to fix this shit, especially if you if you minority, you kidding yourself. You kidding yourself. If you got babies at home, right? You being selfish to them, right? It's all about you, right? So, let's figure out a way to do it permanently. Right, so how do you do it? Again, so going back to my original question, how do you do it? You are trying to do two things in conjunction, right? Reduce the amount of carbs you eat permanently. Hey, Beatrice, permanently, not by a challenge, not for thirty days, permanently, right? Begin to reduce it. I do it by reducing my window. I eat, eat in. I do it by using ketones as as a supplement to help me not get hungry and not crave carbohydrates. However you do it, right? Begin to reduce the amount of carbohydrates you eat. Number one. Number two, you want to begin to improve your health and fitness and strength so that you can begin to create a strategy by where you regularly empty out your G tank throughout the week and allow your body to have no immediate glycogen or glucose fuel and forcing it to use fat. 
as an energy source, right? So the weight you lose is not as important as making your body rid, ridding your body of the glycogen and glucose it needs or thinks it needs, right? Getting rid of that through reduction of, of, of carbon intake and through the ability to work your way out of, out of all that fuel, right? So that requires you get in shape, right? That requires, yeah, you can walk. Yeah, but it takes forever to burn through it, right? And I have nothing, against walk, nothing against walking or jogging or treadmill. It just takes forever doing those things to burn through glycogen, right? So when you build up your stamina and your strength, now you can go into a gym and do an hour UMC workout, right, with some deadlifts, some power pulls, some burpees, some, some dumbbell presses, some squats, right, and get your body to a position where it burns through that glycogen. Now... You can do two things. You can let your body burn body fat, or now you have more capacity to go to that party, right? And consume that pizza without any risk of fat storage, right? So, so that's how it works, guys. It's very simple, right? We make it more hard than it is. It's not easy, but it's simple. The equation is simple, right? How do I get nice abs? That was the question, right? Well, you have to get rid of the fat layer, Right, doing abdominal stuff will make him look nice. Right, once the fat layer is gone, but the first point, the first thing to make him make him show is getting rid of the fat layer. How do we do that? We make our body use body fat for energy. How do we do that? We get rid of glycogen and glucose. How do we do that efficiently? Right, we do things that make our body use a lot of glycogen. Right, explosive moves, strong moves, moves that require multiple muscle groups, multiple joints, right? Multiple movements of your body, right? Get your heart rate up, make your body calibrate the body temperature, make your body sore and recovery, make the reco recovery period longer, right? Think about it that what's harder to do? Make your body do the things that require it to use the most fuel in the workout and after the workout. Right, that's what you do. So when you're thinking, what's the best way to burn fuel? It's probably the thing you don't want to do. So close your eyes and think about the things you hate doing, and then go do them. Right, Coach Bobby, what's the best way to burn body body fat or or burn glycogen to get the body fat? I'm gonna say, close your eyes and imagine the shit you don't want to do, and then go do that. Can I walk? You can walk. Yeah, for eight hours. Can I go for a jog? You can jog for three. Or you can do a UMC workout for 20 minutes, an hour, maybe. Right? Simple as that. Right? So it's simple, guys. We complicate it. We want to avoid all everything, all you know, we want to go all everything around the fight. We want to avoid it all, you know, it's simple, right? Permanently, permanently reduce the amount of carbs you eat, period. I don't suggest going zero. I don't suggest going heavy keto, right? Especially if you're going heavy fat, right? And not and not using the fuel, right? Um, and I suggest you guys figure out a way to burn through a lot of fuel in as short amount of time as possible, right? You don't have a lot of time, guys. You don't want to be in the gym. I know. I know you guys. I know most of you. If you want, if you love being in the gym and you love working out and you and you had time to do that. You probably won't be listening to this, right? So because you have limited time, because you maybe don't want to work out as much, do things that are short, that get rid of glycogen more quickly, right? More painfully maybe, but more quickly, right? I know you would rather walk for two hours than train hard for 20 minutes. I know. I know you would, right? But you don't have time to do that. And you want to eat that, that donut or that rice or that pasta, Right. So because you want to eat that stuff occasionally, hopefully. Right. And because you don't want to be in a gym forever. Right. We got to do things more efficiently. All right. So if you guys want more information on that, my YouTube page has workouts. Uh, Coach Bobby Bluford, uh, my Facebook page uh, has information. And you can always if you can't come to our, our workouts directly and locally, you can log in virtually if you're interested in that. You know, ping us, ping me on my uh, directly uh, on Facebook personally or go to my Coach Bobby page to ping me. Um, but, yeah, you can join in, you know, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 
uh, California time. Um, but it's simple, guys. Uh, you can begin to get rid of this this body fat, right, and and get in the best shape of your life. You know, next year, the year after that, the year after that. There's no reason you guys can't get better. Right, I'm 47 this year, um, and you know I'm in as good a shape as I was when I was playing cornerback in college. Right, I maybe mean, I can't run as fast, maybe, or jump as high, but you can't tell by looking at me. Right, so that can be you. Right, that can be you. I promise you, it can be you. But you have to begin to understand and be honest with yourself about what you really want to do. Right, if you really don't want to change, right, or don't think. You know, having pizza and never moving your body is 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 okay. Then that's fine. I'm gonna love you either way, right? But we gotta be honest with ourselves, right? And then we can move forward. All right. So, uh, happy Wednesday. Um, if there are any questions? You know, feel free to ping me offline. Uh, I know you guys have frustrations. We all do. I know. You know, it seems daunting and it seems impossible. Um, but it's not, it's not. All right, guys. So talk to you guys soon. Um, have a great evening. Happy Wednesday. And I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good night, guys. Love you. Bye-bye.